Today, for the first episode of our highball series, we're going to explore one of the most iconic and beloved cocktail ever, the gin and tonic, and we are going to bring it to the next level. Yes, we all know how to make a gin and tonic, but do you know how to make it extra special? Today, we are exploring five easy steps to make sure we get a perfect result every time, as well as a few options for a flavorful twist, because everyone loves a change from time to time. Stick till the end to discover my favorite recipe and the extra ingredient I use to make the best gin and tonic ever. Let's dig in. Ice is crucial. No matter what you heard, it is a proven fact. More ice equals a cocktail that stays colder for longer and that dilutes slower. And let's be honest, nobody likes a lukewarm, over-diluted, flat gin and tonic. So no matter what glass you use, it's a no-brainer. You want to fill it with ice to the top. Talking about glasses, there isn't really an option better than the other. Two very common options these days are the classic highball, very sober, and the balloon copa glass that leaves a lot of room for crazy garnishes and ice cubes. There is an incredible amount of gin producers nowadays with the craziest flavor profiles out there. Some people would say it's insane to use a top shelf gin bottle for a gin and tonic, but I believe it's a perfect occasion to try a new gin in a recipe that is familiar. In the end, you do you, I believe there is no wrong choice of gin for a gin and tonic. So we only have two main ingredients here, so don't underestimate the choice of tonic. There are big differences and a lot of choice out there. It's important to pick something you love first, and a good base is to choose something that has a natural source of quinine and a reasonable amount of sweetener. If you're indecisive, a blind test is always fun and useful to pick up the best option you have access to. Now, most people enjoy a ratio of between two and three parts tonic to one part gin. A standard pour of gin is two ounces, but I find it interesting to adapt that to your glasses. It's really handy to know your glassware. For example, I know that this glass filled with ice fits two ounces of gin and just above four ounces of tonic, which is perfect for my taste. Beyond that, it's simply a question of preference. This is where things can get really interesting. There is a huge amount of extra ingredients you can incorporate to your gin and tonic to make it extra special and unique. One of the easiest options is simply to pick up a flavored tonic. I know things like yuzu, elderflower, or blackcurrants are among my favorites. A touch of salt, most of the time, in the form of saline solution, can be all you need to lift up the flavors of your gin and tonic. A good ratio is simply to dissolve 20 grams of salt in 80 grams of water. A little drop bottle comes in handy, but you can also simply drop a pinch of salt in your cocktail. Now, a couple dashes of your favorite bitters can be all you need to bring an extra dimension to your gin and tonic. Something floral, herbal, spicy, or fruity would work a treat here. Celery bitters is one of my favorites for the gin and tonic because I really love the subtle savory note it brings to the cocktail. Now, another very interesting way to add a bit of complexity to your gin and tonic would be to use a liqueur for a kick of flavor and a touch of sweetness. Maybe a splash of green chartreuse for herbal notes. Or why not some suze for a more earthy and bitter touch. Or simply elderflower liqueur for a floral touch. Many possibilities. I love to experiment with everything I have in the bar. Quick note, if you're using a very strong liqueur, it might be wise to dial down a notch the amount of gin just to keep things in balance. Now finally, enhancing your gin and tonic can be as easy as adding a touch of sweetness and a touch of acidity that will balance each other and bring an extra layer of complexity. A splash of lemon, touch of syrup, make it a flavored syrup if you feel like something like rosemary syrup can be very nice, just be creative. Now garnishes are a very important part of the flavor profile of the drink, whether to bring flavor to the nose or infuse in the drink. You could choose to match one of the flavors present in your gin or simply create a crazy contrast. Fresh fruits, herbs, spices are always a good idea in my opinion. Now there is one extra ingredient that I started using long ago and that for me makes all the difference in the gin and tonic. It's really easy to make and ever since I started making it, I always have a bottle in the fridge. Let me show you how it works. Simply chop up a fresh cucumber Place it in a jar and add half its weight in sugar and half its weight in vinegar. 
White wine vinegar and apple cider vinegar are a good pick for this recipe. Then simply keep it in the fridge for two days, shaking it from time to time before straining it and bottling it. It's ready, you made a cucumber shrub and it will keep in the fridge for at least a year. So if you're not familiar with what a shrub is, we simply created a very flavorful syrup that is enhanced with a touch of acidity. So we have three big pillars of the cocktail flavors, sweetness, acidity, and flavor. And that is gonna make a huge difference in our gin and tonic. Let me show you my perfect recipe. In a tall glass filled with fresh ice to the top, I start with two ounces of my favorite gin, followed by half an ounce of our cucumber shrub, I squeeze half a lime and top with ice cold tonic. I know this glass allows for four ounces of tonic, which is perfect for me. Finally, for garnish, I'm gonna use a fresh sprig of rosemary. And there you have a beautiful gin and tonic. Now, cucumber is always a good idea in a gin and tonic, in my opinion. The shrub we are using today adds a lot of freshness, as well as a little touch of acidity and a touch of sweetness, enhancing the botanical flavors of the gin and tonic, for me, making it perfect. So this recipe is for me the perfect way to make an apparently sober gin and tonic extra special. As we've seen today, there are many different ways to bring your cocktail to more uncharted territory, but I found that I keep on coming back to this basic recipe every time in between more crazy experimentations. So this was the first video of our Highball series. Thank you very much for watching it. Check out the next videos for more inspiration on the same template. Don't forget to subscribe while you like the video. I'll see you next week for more cocktail adventures. Cheers.